believe in the God of miracles this morning. He's in this place, and there's nothing that he can't do. Let faith arise in this place as we sing this morning. Let faith arise. In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief, I choose to trust you. Champions not dead, he is alive, and he already knows my every need. And surely he will come and rescue me. Let's declare God of miracles, he's in this place, and we sing. Lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. 
said we lift up holy hands without wrath or doubt. Go ahead. Come on, everybody. Just lift up your hands and begin to praise him. Begin to magnify him. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Really begin to praise him. Everybody lift your voice. Lift your hands. Magnify him. Glorify him. Give him praise.
Come on, everybody, lift your hands and shout. Come on, lift your hands and give God praise. Come on, out of your heart. Come on, begin to praise Him. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be intimidated. Don't be ashamed. Just begin to worship Him. Begin to praise Him. Begin to magnify Him. Begin to glorify Him. Begin to lift your voice. Hallelujah. Lord, I glorify you. I magnify you. I lift you up. I adore you. I worship you. Oh, oh, God of miracles. Come on, you can do it. Just take a few more minutes. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. for supernatural power. Life changing. School changing. Power of God. Safety and protection. Healing and deliverance. Overcoming power. How many of you believe that with me today? Come on, thank God for it. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Ooh. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. How many know it's about Him? It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. We magnify Him. We glorify Him. We worship and praise the Lord. If you would do me one more favor before you're seated. I know there's a lot of you embarrassed or whatever it may be. The Bible says we lift our hands before him. I want everybody in this place, unashamedly, just lift your hands to him. He says we're to do it. If you've never done it before, go ahead, do it. Just surrender to him today. God, we surrender to you. Lord, we lift our hands to honor you. We lift our hands to worship you. We lift our hands to call on you. And we say, come in this house and build this house. Fill these people. And we thank you today that we're going to see transformative power. We're believing, Lord, that every school shall flourish. That changes will come. Manifestation of your spirit will occur. Father, you'll work in our principles. You'll work in the administration. You'll work in the government. That, Lord, change, 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 change. Everything needed will be accomplished. Lord, you told me that Florence shall flourish. 
Say that with me. Florence shall flourish. Say it again. Florence shall flourish. One more time. Florence shall flourish. The more you're seated, give God a shout of praise. Go ahead. Give him praise. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I sense his presence. How many know God is a good God? All the time. And all the time, God is good. Say it again. God is a good God. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Amen. I believe, don't you? I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the move of God. I believe in that transforming power. And we've been praying and believing and watching God do it in a miraculous, powerful way. Changing schools after schools. Changing buildings after building. Changing situation after situation. Moving what needed to be moved. Arranging what needed to be arranged. And how many know it happens because we prayed and we believed? Look at somebody and say, we pray and we believe. Hallelujah. How many know the Bible is clear to us? It tells us in Malachi chapter 3 that we are to bring our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse. Look at somebody and say, God wants tithes and offerings. He doesn't need them. He wants them. They're a surrender. Tithes and offerings are a surrender for us. They're our trust factor. They are our ability to secure, not to God. You know how many know God doesn't need anything? Look at somebody and say, God doesn't need a thing. He's got it. But he said, when we bring our tithes and offerings into the house, we provide in the storehouse what's necessary. You know, what's needed. Sometimes I think people don't realize what tithes and offerings actually do. Maybe they, they don't know. And maybe just to tell you that the storehouse of God is not free, but the Word of God is. Giving the Word of God is free. Everybody can receive the Word. The Word can be given easily and freely. But the delivery of the word requires things. It requires stuff. It requires places. It requires, you know, uh, uh, help to do that in the sense that, you know, if you're going to Africa, you've got to have trucks and cars and bikes and motorcycles. It's the provision. So God made a method of provision for the house of God. He provided a way for us as the church to give to the world the gospel that is free. Every word that's given is free. But the method of giving is not free. You're sitting on chairs that had to be paid for, lights that have to be paid for. Uh, all the staff that works to do all that we do to get this, this together has to be paid for because they deserve to be paid. I'd love to work for free. If I could work for God and not have to make a dime ever, I'd do it. I have a calling on my life. But I've got three kids and a wife, and they all need me to come up with some money. Somebody ought to say amen. How many know they need that? And so I have to have a salary. The church has to pay a salary to the staff and employees. But there's far more than that. We reach across the world. We reach across the globe and we give and we sow <coughs> all over the world. You know, I was so happy that we were able to provide all the money we sent to Africa for, or not Africa, to Colombia for that mission that we helped build the inside of so they can have a, a house for people and for, uh, 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 you know, all the things that we've done. I mean, all over the world. It's just like that. We've done that everywhere. But it comes because people have obeyed the word of God. They've obeyed in doing what God said. Bring all the tithe in the storehouse. Prove me with it, says here the Lord, that I'll not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Would you guys turn over there to, to Malachi chapter 3 for me? If you could put it up on the screen for me. Malachi chapter 3. Go to verse 10. He said, bring all the tithe in the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And, and try me. Try me in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I'll not open up the windows of heaven. And I'll pour you out a blessing. There won't be room enough to contain it. Go to the next verse. Verse 11. He said, and, there will, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruits of your ground, nor shall your vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord. How many of you understand this? That God has provided a guarantee of financial blessing. Look at somebody and say, God has provided... A guarantee of financial blessing. Here it is. 
We bring our tithes and the us. Bring the things of God that he's asked us to bring. But more than that, not only has he provided the breakthrough for you financially, but he has also provided the security of the breakthrough. In other words, tithing is the insurance policy on blessing. Nobody shouted there, but I would have. I would have shouted right there. Tithing is the insurance benefit. Tithing gives us an insurance benefit. It's our insurance of the safety of our finances, the safety of our home, the safety of our blessing. When God blesses me, he'll make sure that it is provided for with insurance. He gives back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, causing men to pour in our bosom. Believers, listen to me. You cannot afford, you cannot afford to not be a tither. You have to decide, make a decision, make a commitment, make an effort to jump in with God and say, God, I want your blessing. But more than wanting your blessing, I want your protection. I want your safety. I want your, your, your outlook on my life. I want you to look over my kids and look over my children and look over my wife and look over the blessing because I don't just want my blessings to just be sitting there. Tithing is a lifestyle. And Malachi 11 tells us we have an insurance on a lifestyle of blessing. Somebody say that I get insurance on a lifestyle of blessing. When I teach this, I get people there. Some of you, I look out across the room, some of you are smiling big. But there are some of you looking like, I know I'm not doing this right. Let me encourage you to do it right. Get involved. This can be day one of your beginning. You can make a commitment. You know, there are many times, many different ways to give at Family Worship Center. You can give in the, in, the, in the offering bucket today. If you can, you can pick up one of these envelopes, put your name and number on there, or you can even put a credit card or debit card on there safely and securely. Take up an offering. Give your tithes and offerings. But then there's also going on a computer. You can give on a computer. You can go online and give by check, debit, or credit card. You can go online. You can go to our kiosk. We have places where you can swipe a card and walk right out the door with a tithe and offering. You can also go on your phone. How many of you got a phone? Only about 10 of you have phones. That's amazing. I don't know how. So you can go online, 843-407-3995, and give right there. This is another way of secure giving. And so there's many different opportunities. Facebook has a way of giving. We did that for convenience because we wanted to make sure that every person, every person that could give has the opportunity to give in a more convenient way. And when we give, we don't give to a God who needs. We're not giving to a needy God. The Bible says he owns all the cattle on all the hills. And he owns the hills the cattle are on. So he owns the cattle and the hills. He said all the gold and all the silver is mine. I don't care how much you got and how many Bitcoin you have. God owns it all. He owns it. He has it all. And everything that it's on. Everything that it's part. So I want to tell you this morning. If you're not giving to a needy God. God is not the one in need of giving. Look at somebody say, God is not the one in need of giving. I didn't, I didn't get enough of that. I'd like to hear that a little. Look at somebody say, God is not the one in need of giving. And then look at him and say, you are. You are. You are the one that is in need of giving. Oh, I almost dropped my iPad. You are. Your giving is not for God's sake. It's for your sake. Your giving is not for God's sake. It's for your sake. And Psalms tells us all the things we need to know about it. And giving keeps your finances and faith alive. Amen? I encourage you this morning. Everybody ought to be breaking out their wallets, breaking out all their ability. They ought to be breaking out their pens and writing on the envelopes ready to give to God faithfully and committed. Don't miss your opportunity to give. Not for God and not even for the needs of the house. We are blessed. Family Worship Center is blessed because God's, God has blessed this place. And I always tell people, if you want to be blessed, just say this. You know, as it is in this house, so shall it be in my house. As it is in this house, so shall it be in my house. Every bill is paid. Every need met. Money in the bank. All that we need. God's done it. And more to come. More to come. And we're watching. Our churches are doing well. All of our churches are financially blessed. All of our churches' bills are paid. All of our churches, everything, all the need. Not one pastor trying to struggle to make it. Not one pastor hoping the offering comes in Sunday so they can pay the bills. Amen. I was just in Georgetown last week. I know y'all have Pastor Steve. How many enjoyed Pastor Steve last week? I love that guy. He's a good fella. And he preaches a good word. If you didn't come, you missed a good word. And so, listen, we're blessed. 
and uh, and uh, I was over there. We had a great crowd. We had a great service. Had a great word. It was wonderful. And uh, that's all that you've sown into. And we have more to come, more to do. And so I just encourage you again, give, 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 give for you. Give the way God says for you. God doesn't want you going in debt. God's not going to put you in a debt situation. He's going to put you in a blessing situation. He puts you in a blessing situation. Don't feel guilty about your giving. God didn't say you had to feel guilty. He just did. He is encouraging us to walk in faith and not by sight. Look at somebody say, I walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. I'm going to pray over the offer. Y'all ready to give? Raise your hand if you're ready to give. All right, here's what we're going to do. Just for everybody in the place, I want you to pick up one of those envelopes next to you on the seat around you. Hold up an envelope. You, you may be giving online. You might be giving by kiosk or whatever. But we're going to, by faith, hold up these envelopes. I'm going to pray a couple of prayers over these envelopes. Lord, I thank you that every person that holds up an envelope today has the faith to give. I speak to them now that you put it inside of their heart that they can see what they could not otherwise see and know what they could not otherwise know. God, that you would reveal it to them in their spirit because it comes by light. And I thank you that revelation comes to every person in this room today. Lord, for those that are already active givers who give towards the kingdom of God and are sowing into the kingdom of God, I speak over their gifts that you multiply their seed sown. Just like you said, you would multiply it. Thank you that they see multiplied activity in their finances. Watch how you provide for them and keep their cars and tires and, and all the things they own and possess. Keep over their animals and dogs and cats and houses. Father, that you watch over all their investments and all that they do, their jobs and everything that they participate in. And Father, we just give you all the glory today that your seed brings harvest into your kingdom. That we see harvest at Family Worship Center, harvest with our finances. Lord, that things grow and continue to increase. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.
How about now? There it is. <laughs> Amen. Hey, y'all, my name is Brother Kendall. I am so excited to be here, y'all, uh, with y'all today. And who here is excited about Summer Surge coming up next summer? That is right. Who here knows that the best gift we can ever give to our kids is to allow the Holy Spirit to come and change their lives? I mean, who here knows that the best gift we can ever give to our kids is the Holy Spirit to come and radically transform their lives? Amen. Y'all, I have a son. His name is Brady. He's real cute. He's one and a half. And me and my wife are actually expecting another little boy on Wednesday. And we are so excited. And I was just thinking throughout this week, gosh, I want my sons to be so full of the Holy Ghost, to be so zealous for God's presence that it just radiates off them, that they just feel closer to Jesus every time someone gets around them. And so how do we do that? How do we allow our kids to be in an atmosphere so full of the presence, so ready to tell their friends, so ready to supernaturally change their family's lives, so ready to just share the love of God because it's overflowing out of them. How do we do that? We get them in the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit changes their heart. And so I want to encourage you. The best gift we can ever give to our kids is to get them in the presence of God and allow the Holy Spirit to change them. And how do they do that? At Summer Surge. At Summer Surge. So we are doing a lot of things this year to get our kids to Summer Surge. We're doing a lot of fundraising. The first is we have attraction books. And we have uh, Tidal Wave tickets, and we have um, little discount cards that they can sell. And if you want any information about that, that's out in the lobby. And my wife will be sitting out there But um, if you have any questions. But I just want to encourage you. The best gift we can give is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for bringing us into this place today. I pray for our kids that they will be so radically transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit and by a move of God that nothing can hinder them from sharing the gospel. The enemy has no place in our school. The enemy has no place in our families, homes, and lives. The enemy has no place messing with our kids. So I pray right now, Lord God, that there will be nothing hindering them from going to camp. I pray that you will allow us to be so excited, so ready for them to go to camp that, God, that they will be able to go in an abundance and that through our giving and through our just uh, zeal to get them into the presence, God, that there will be nothing that can keep them from your presence and that you will be with us always. We thank you and we love you. Amen. Amen. Who's bringing their kids to camp? I want to see every hand raised because every kid needs to go to camp. It will change their lives. And if that doesn't persuade you, maybe this video will. Let's play it.
praise Him. Come on, lift your hands and magnify Him. Come on, glorify Him. Go ahead. Come on, we need a move of God. We need a move. We always need Him to come. We always need Him to move. Come on, come on. We need a move. promise you the presence of God will not hurt your family. It will not hurt your children. It will not affect them. It will not mess them up. It will bless their life. Let him move. Let him do what he wants to do. Let them see God move in you. Let them see God touch your life. The greatest thing they'll ever see is God move in you. Is God touch you. Is you become in love with Jesus. Let him touch you today. Let him manifest in you today. Let him fill your home. Let him fill your life. Jesus is here. When we 
Would you give God shouts of praise before you receive it? Come on, I mean, really shout it out. Come on, don't leave. Let it go. Let it out. Praise Him. Give Him praise. Don't hold back today. Give Him praise. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. He's worthy of our praise. He's really worthy of all of our praise. He's worthy of all of our glory. He's worthy that we magnify him. He's worthy that we lift him up. He's worthy that we bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times, at all times, at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you are getting it. Some of you can understand what I'm talking about. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. One more time before you're seated, I want you to shout out hallelujah and have a seat. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. That's okay. Keep shouting. Hallelujah. Let them say continually. Hallelujah. The Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, just right there where you're sitting, you ought to praise him, son. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, hallelujah. It's not by might. The Bible says it's not by might. And then he says it's not by power. But it is by my spirit. But it is by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not how much we work. It's not how much his presence. It's his anointing. And every one of us in this room need his presence and we need his anointing. We need his presence and we need his anointing. We need his presence when we sleep. We need his presence when we wake up. We need his presence in our lunchtime hour. We need his presence through our work day. We need his presence when we go the next hours. We need his presence through the evening time. It's not by mind and it's not by power, but it is by his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's not offended. He won't be hurt by your shouting. Glory to God. Whew. You know, this is our back to school Sunday. And we've been doing this now since we started back in 2000. And every year we've come at this moment to pray over our children, over our teachers, over our school board, over every person who would come. The most important thing we could do is not giving away book bags, and we'll do that. It's not giving away pencils, and we'll do that. It's not bounce houses. We'll do all that. But today it's prayer. Today it's believing God for his anointing. It's believing that there's an impartation. And I fasted and prayed and believed God for this day, that there would be a strong anointing and a strong presence. And when I laid hands on the children, the teachers, you know, teachers in this room, they need students that listen. They need students that hear. They need ideas. They need wisdom from heaven, knowledge that only comes from God. And I thank God they're going to get help today. The students, they need teachers that love them and care for them and respect them and that they will be treated with great respect and that they will learn. And someone will care about them and teach them and give them. And I pray for them that their discipline is intact and that they listen to mom. How many know, listen kids, let me tell you something you need to do this year. Listen to your mother and your father. I didn't get enough shouting from parents on that one. 
Let me try it again because I know I'm going to be a parent this time. All right, Amy, you, you and I will be parents this time. I'll say it like I'm the preacher and we'll be parents. Are you ready? Children, you need to listen to your parents. Yeah! Amen! Amen! <laughs> I mean, no parents, we've already been there. We've already done that. We can help them. Amen. They need support. They need our support. You know, not everything's going to go their way. Not every decision will fall in their benefit. People will make decisions about their lives that we don't agree with. We would like it to be another way. We'd like it to go a different direction. And we as parents get wounded and hurt because of these decisions. But more than anything, we need to be a support system for our family and stand with them and agree with them. They need us to support them. They need us to love them. And so today when we do this service, it is because we truly believe that we make an impact in our schools. You know, for years we prayed, and I'm not being offensive about my decisions to say this to you today. I, I, I hope it doesn't hurt anybody's feelings or offend anybody, but you know, sometimes change is needed to make a difference. It doesn't matter where you're at or what you're doing. There are times in an organization and in, in whatever we do that change is a needed thing. Sometimes it's real hard. Even, even in church, it's hard when you begin to make changes. People don't understand those changes. They don't understand why would you make those changes. What do you, why didn't you keep going the way you were going? How about them? And sometimes there's change that needs to be made that makes a difference and an impact, not only in the people that are with you, but in all the people that can come to you. And sometimes it's beneficial for everybody when you make those changes because we discover value in people in other ways. All of your value is not sucked up into one place or one situation. It can change. And so God does things, and so with our school systems. You know, I was, so, I was so, you know, as we started in this process, you know, we started out at Del May Elementary, and it was a good experience. We had good, good, Stephen went through and did real well, and then ended up in more. Then we had Brian, you know, that came up, and now we have Emily there. And we just continued to pray, and we saw a new school built. How many are glad for the new school buildings? I mean, we watched that happen, and we saw things happen, and we saw how teachers changed around. But then there were situations that we had problems with as we went through the school system. We looked at, you know, various places that our families may be involved and things they would be, would be involved in. And I don't ever pray against anybody. I wouldn't do that. I would always pray that God would help them to see what we need them to see, that you need them to see. That God, if there's ungodliness and, Lord, there's needs that, that could advance, the, you know, a better attitude and a better atmosphere. We pray for that. Lord, if things are stuck, sometimes they need to be unstuck. And, you know, last year the Lord did something supernatural for us. He brought us a brand new system into the school system. We have a brand new uh, uh, superintendent of schools who's really reaching out to do some new things. And not everything's pleasant. I'm sure there are people that are against things that they want to do and for things they want to do. It's never going to be perfect. Nothing ever is. But I think what he's doing is positive, and it's going in a positive direction. I see positive things. I'm, fa I'm, I'm favorable for positive, po positive <laughs> things. I'm favorable for that. When it's going the right direction, we say amen. amen. Y'all ought to shout out amen. amen. But last year, you know, Stephen moved up to a new place. And, of course, Brian being over there at Sneed. And, you know, I began to pray about the schools. And, and Stephen was about to move up into the ninth grade. And I went over for a band competition. When I walked into the school, as I, as I was sitting there, the, the place wasn't anything I thought it would be. I thought I'm walking into high school. I was going to be impressed. And I get in there for this band competition. And, and to be honest with you, the only thing that would come out of my mouth is, this is a dump. Nobody's shouting, but that's what came out of my mouth as I left. I looked at Stephen and said, man, that place is a dump. And uh, it wasn't about necessarily the buildings that bothered me. It was something else that I didn't sense was right. It just wasn't right. And I began to pray about it and really seek God about it. Really seek God. Really pray because I know I've got three coming to that school. Stephen, Brian, and Emily, they're going there. So I began to seek the Lord and really pray and really ask him for change. And overnight, principles all over Florence were moved. One of the ladies who, who used to attend our church, she's, she lives in another place, but she used to attend here, played the music for us, was put in as the principal at South Florence High School. Well, thank God for that. We'll take that. How many say amen to that? A new man was put into West Florence. A new man was put into to, uh, uh, Moore where my son was. And, and they, they changed all that. Things were brought out that whether they were right or wrong, I believe that I'm for positive change. How many are for positive change? And I went and met, them, met the principals and spent time with the principal. Went over and met the principal of Wilson and spent time with him. And he, he, he invited us and opened the school up and said, you can come. And he said, I even give preachers keys to come around the church and pray. I shouldn't tell you that. 
But he, he just lets them come pray over the school. And oh, I think that's tremendous. How many think that's great? I think that's great. I think our schools ought to be open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ought to be open to the faith in the house. Amen. There's a lot of other things in there. Let's set some faith in. Somebody say amen. They let everything else. They may as well let some faith. Amen. We're shutting faith out and letting everything else in. How about we let the faith in too? How about that? Somebody ought to say amen. Your kids get everything but Jesus there. Amen. We ought to pray that God will fill it with Jesus too. Amen. The Bible says where sin does abound, so much more does grace. How many believe grace can fill our schools, fill our colleges? That our kids can be a light and an influence. They don't just have to be attenders. They can be a, an influence in the school. I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, so, you know, we began to pray. And God changed out those principles. And we continued to pray because we thought there were some additional changes that needed to be made. In particular, I wanted my son in the band to do well. And I saw some things there that were not what I wanted them to be. I'm just going to be real honest. Is this okay to be truthful with you? And I wasn't happy with the band situation. Stephen was in the band, and Brian would probably be in the band, and Emily's going to be in the band. I want my kids to play instruments. They have to do some type of athletics. They have to do some type of music, no matter what it is. So St Brian's playing saxophone, Stephen's playing trumpet, and, and Emily's going to play drums. Yeah. Future drummer. There's a drummer back there shouting, and she's got rhythm, brother. But I began to pray about it and pray about this. I went to see the principal about the band director and said, can we get him some help? Can we put some help in the room? How about we send you some help? How about we, we, we believe together? I took him a list of things that I believe were needed for the band and things like this. It was really important that I felt to do this. I took pictures of things. I know the kids probably don't need to hear this, but I made a decision personally to, to follow things they didn't know I was following, do things they didn't know I was doing, listen to the music they were playing. And I felt like that we needed a better influence in there, a better situation. So I began to pray and began to work and began to talk to the principal. And, and, and I began to spend time with the Lord. And just if God would just put somebody in there. And interestingly enough, the Lord worked all that out for us. And a situation occurred that allowed for him to be moved into a different position or a different situation. And God brought back a, a new band director. And that band director, when he was a kid, used to attend our church. When I walked in the band room, I walk in and... The band director goes, you're Pastor Steve. I'm like, yeah, I prayed you in, dude. I sought God for you. You better be shouting because this man prayed for you to get this job. Amen. <laughs> I'm not the only one. And then, and then it's just it's so much better. The band is better. There's better things happening. There's better ideas, better knowledge, better emphasis. And then we began to walk. I walked into the building the other day, and I was just walking around with Steve, and he was going to something, doing something. I walked with him. One of the young ladies came out and started yelling, hey, Pastor Steve. And I thought, what are you doing here? And she said, they've made me a vice principal. She, she, she attended our church. She's family with our church. She's a friend to our church. And a, a major, major change to see her there. And I was thrilled with that. I mean, how exciting was that? I mean, praise God. One of our church members, one, somebody believes like us, she's in a faith church just like this. There's another faith church, and she her mother, uh, mother, mother attended that church, and so she connected with that church because of her mother. But I'm thrilled to have a faith person there. Then I find out that another vice principal was moved in. They moved out. Some other ones moved another one in. He's sitting right there. Over, I mean, look how God's doing this. So that's how he does these things. We pray and we believe. These, these meetings matter. And I'm grateful for you for being here because we're making an impact and a difference. Things are changing. It isn't all what we want it to be, but it's moving in the right direction. Somebody shout out amen. I've got to pray for you, so I'm about done. Now, we'll pray fast. We're very good at prayer fast. Amen. Ecclesiastes 7.12 says this. For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. And the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him that has it. Wisdom preserves the life of him that has it. There is a, a value to and a belief in. And the knowledge of the word is that the wisdom and knowledge are crucial to our existence, crucial to our benefit, crucial to our future. I mean, continued education is a great thing. We ought to all continue to grow in our knowledge base, grow in our knowledge, grow in our wisdom. Because it helps us and benefits us financially and it benefits us mentally. It doesn't matter where you are. Maybe today you're sitting in here and you cannot read. 
It wouldn't hurt you to find some way to get someone or get some ability to read it. Find someone to help you. It would benefit your life. There'd be nothing wrong with you continuing to learn to read. You shouldn't be embarrassed and feel like that. You see, there are all kinds of situations and circumstances in this room. There's, a, you know, I mean, just, I mean, look at the number of people that are in this room. This place is packed. And so in doing so, we come in all kinds of, there's doctorates sitting in this room, people that have doctorate degrees. But they continue. My wife would just, has just finished her education continuum. She went on. She's a teacher, was teacher of the year twice, doesn't teach in the schools anymore. But I told her, you know, should I, you know, go saw off a log on a tree and fall out of the tree and die? You better have a job. <laughs> you better go get your degree. Go finish your education. So she went and got her continuing ed this, this summer so that she could continue to teach, even though she has a teaching degree. There's not a thing wrong with that. Not a thing wrong with her having, you know, the smarts to do that. So continue to, to build your education. Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. You don't let your children decide that, it's, that they don't need it or they don't want it or they shouldn't get it. The Bible says they should get it. You should pursue it and pursue it for them and pursue it with them to the best of your ability. Of all the things my kids can do at school, whether it be band or whether it be sports or all the things we try to do, the one thing that is important that we spend our year on is making sure they get the grades right. Because nothing matters if they don't get that right. Somebody say amen. How much better is wisdom than gold? Proverbs 16, 60. To get understanding is to be chosen before silver and gold. Proverbs 18, 15 says, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Proverbs 18, 15. Put that up there on the screen if you can. It'll be in, in uh, King James. I'm in the ESV, but here's what it says. An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Proverbs 4, 13 says, keep hold of instruction. Don't let it go. Guard it, for she's life. I could continue on and read more and more of these scriptures about the Bible telling us how valuable and important this moment is for us to believe for the best, to believe that the Florence school systems rise to the highest levels, to believe that our test scores are higher than anyone else's. See, I'm believing that the kids at Family Worship Center test higher than everybody else. Or, or I should say, test as high as everybody like us that believes like we believe. You understand what I'm saying? But I want our kids to excel. I want your kids to do well. You say, well, my child's a C student. I believe they can go higher than that. Yes. Somebody said, my child's an F student. Well, we're getting out of that, amen? We're going forward, not backward. Yes. But I want to say this. The greatest instruction you'll give your family is the one you're giving them right now. The greatest instruction you're actually pouring into your child is by sitting in this room today acknowledging the importance of a man laying hands on them in agreement for their success. It is coming into the house of God. You cannot sacrifice a spiritual knowledge for anything at all because spiritual knowledge is eternal knowledge. And I want to encourage you that not only do you give them the natural knowledge, but we encourage you to continue on with spiritual knowledge for them to understand the value of spiritual knowledge. Don't just allow the internet and their friends to tell them God doesn't exist. Don't let that happen because God is everywhere and in everything that they do. And if they could find the Word of God and find the Word of God for them, we can change that opinion. But the world wants to profess to them that God doesn't exist anymore. All the influences in the world try to tell them that God is just some ethereal being out somewhere that is uninvolved in our life. He created a world He wants nothing to do with. That's like you having a car and putting no gas in it and hoping you never drive it. How many would think you would buy a car, do nothing with it, leave it all to itself, and hope that it just does well? No, you're going to drive the car. You want to ride the car. You, God is involved in man's being. He's involved in miraculous ways. This is not some test. This is an eternity. What God has done, see, you have to understand, God is a fair God. And if God did not give us an opportunity to fairly choose him, then you're right. There is no God. If there was no choice to choose him. He doesn't send people to hell. They send themselves. They make their own choices. He gives their own decisions. He allows them to believe him or not believe him because he's a fair God. He doesn't make anyone go to heaven. Nobody shouted on that one, but God won't make anybody. He does not. He loves us enough to let everybody choose hell. He won't make you go to heaven. He won't make you believe in him. He won't force you, but he'll give you every opportunity to know him. Give you every chance to know who he is. That's an honest God. That's a faithful God. That's a wonderful God. I'm here if you want me. I'm available. 
You know, I thank God I married a wife who loves me. She don't have to have me. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? My wife don't have to have me. She's got a potential. I mean, she's a phenomenal teacher. She could have a job in the world. She doesn't have to be married to old Stephen T. McCart. She is married to me today because she want to be. Somebody ought to shout out amen. That is a much better position to be in when your wife want to be with you. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, I don't want a wife who got to be with me. I don't know. I don't know how. I, 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 I want somebody who wants to be with me. And God has that same opinion. God wants us to be with him. God wants to be with us. He wants relationship with us, and he'll give you every opportunity to deny a relationship with him. Why would you subject your family and your children to an environment and a people and an internet that they listen to all day long and not give them God as much as you give them the rest? <laughs> Thy word is light unto my feet. Thy word is the light. You've got to get them in the Word, get them in the things of God. You cannot build faith without the Word of God. If you don't give them the Word of God, somebody else will give them a Word that is not God. I wish somebody would shout out amen. Kids, listen to me today. Because you're going to go in a world that doesn't love God. You're going to go on an internet that wants to deceive you and strangle you from the Word. They want to tell you that none of that exists, that none of it's real. And I want to tell you something. I've already had too much for them to tell me that. I've already had God heal my body and touch my, 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 my family in a way that nobody else could do. I've already seen what nobody else could see. You can't make the stuff up that I have seen God do. There's a real God, a real Father, a real heaven, a real place we'll go. And there's also a place that you don't want to go. The Bible says don't despise God in the days of your youth, but love Him while you're young. Young people, you need to love Him right now. You need to find Him right now. You need to seek Him right now. Don't wait till you're 85 years old on your deathbed and say, Jesus, come in my heart. God can do great and mighty things with your life. Make sure that you sell yourself out to God because God is already sold out to you. And if you want great things, God will do great things in your life when you know that living, saving, breathing, wonderful, amazing God. Don't let anybody take him. Don't let a girlfriend steal him from you. Don't let a relationship steal him from you. Don't let an internet site steal him from you. Find him. Get in the Word. Don't tell me you don't believe there's no God when you never read the Bible. Read your Bible and you'll find out God does exist. You'll find out a Heavenly Father who will heal you and help you in every way of your life. Children, young people, listen to me. Get back in the things of God. Get back in church. Proverbs says, my son, don't you forget my teachings, but let them about thine heart and keep them for all your life. For length of days and years of life and peace will they add to thee. Let not, the, that, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the tables of your heart. You'll find favor, good understanding, the sight of God. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. God wants to give you a favorable outcome. Proverbs 4.14 says, Do not enter the paths of the wicked and don't walk in the ways of evil. Avoid it. Shun it. Steer away from it. Be, be able to turn. Don't hang out with those who are... Listen, I'll tell you, you want to lose your faith, get around faithless people. You want to gain faith, get around faithful people. You might be around a nerd, but if he loves Jesus, take the nerd. Oh, I don't know. I want to be somebody. I want people to know who I am. I want to be a, I want to be a star. I want to be known. I want to be knowledge. I want people to, who cares? They won't know you when you leave anyway. Oh, everybody knows who I am right now. I'm preaching. Find friends that know Jesus. Find friends that will put you in touch with the Lord. Find friends who will care about Jesus. Stop being enemies with your church friends. Stop being jealous of how they do. Stop coming into church and judging yourself against them. Make a decision. That's a born-again believer who loves the Lord. And I'm going to be with them. They're going to be with me. We are friends till the end. I'm not letting the devil tear us apart. I'm not letting the enemy come in and rip me out from my friends. I need somebody who will tell me about Jesus. They might be, a, I tell you, you know, you get so in your head thinking about whether or not they fit the right social structure. Your social structure doesn't matter. God matters. <laughs> Hanging out with ungodly people so you can have a reputation. What reputation do you have? John eight thirty two, and you will know the truth, and it is the truth that makes you free. 
You will know the truth. Matthew 6.33 says this. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all the other stuff will be added to you. The blessings of God. First Corinthians, my speech and my preaching was not with wisdom of men, but with the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, that your faith would stand in the power of God. Proverbs said, trust the Lord again with all your heart. I want to end with this. This is my final scripture. I'm saying this today because there is a final realization that you and I need to see. You can't turn on your television anymore to a news channel. You can't watch a, a, a broadcast that you don't see these things. And the Bible told us they would come. As much as we would like them not to come. And thank God for church influence because we can delay, but we cannot stop prophecy. You can only delay it. You cannot stop it. You cannot stop prophecy. Thank God we can hold back the things the devil would like to do, but we can't stop it because it, it, the Bible even tells us he'll have, to, he'll have to take the church from the world. He'll have to take the church from the world for the devil to do what he wants to do. Because the influence of the church, see, we have the word of God in our mouth. If we know the word, we can deflect. I'm preaching real, real good. The only thing that has kept the devil from doing what he wants to do on this earth is the church of Jesus Christ. But we're warned. We are warned. Here's what the Bible says. When you turn on your television, you see them squirting down all the police with water. You might be for that. I don't think we ought to disrespect anybody like that. Police or anybody. Don't come spray no water on me. I'm not going to hold back my gun. I'm just kidding. I don't have a gun. I don't even own a gun. But I'd like to punch you. I'm going to take you down in the neighborhood. That's what I'm saying. You come squirt no water on me. You spray me. I'm coming, I'm coming after you. Don't spray down my children either. You spray down my children, I'll still come after you. I'm just saying. We ought to respect those who have authority. That's what I'm saying. Why would we treat why would we train our children to disrespect authority? Ever. Anyway. Know this. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men will be lovers of themselves. Sound familiar? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. They'll be disobedient to their parents. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Truce breakers. False accusers, incontinent, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but they will deny the power of God. From such, turn away. I want to read this to you from one other translation. Listen to this. In the, in the uh, New International Version, it says it this way. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, and lovers of things. Boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, <coughs> uh, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power from such turn away. Just another uh, version of it. In other words, the future holds, according to the scriptures, that without Jesus, that is what's going to happen. The only thing that will keep your children from becoming that is having Jesus in them. That when they go to school, the teacher doesn't have a student that's out of control, that's unholy, indifferent incontinent, disrespectful, disconnected. You see, when we begin to seed in disconnection and, dis and, and we allow for uncontrolled behavior without those kinds of things, it doesn't just come into what we think they ought to be uncontrolled towards. When I allow them to be uncontrolled towards authority, it also breeds uncontrolled relationships with me. 
they'll stop listening to me. When I don't have a relationship with God that's, that's at the level it should be, when I am discoordinate with God, disconnected with God, then what I do is sow into them a disconnection because what's higher than you? If you have nothing higher than you, then why do you do what you do? If there's nothing bigger than you, if there's no, if there's no answerable thing, then why would you do anything that you do? What would be the purpose of being anything that you are because you meet no standards? There are no standards. If God has no standards for us, if there's no word of standard, then what's the standard? Who decides the standard? Which person makes that standard? Guy downtown? Lawyer? Judge? He makes that standard? Well, what if another guy comes and says no? What if another person comes and decides that this is okay or that's okay? That's the new standard? Because that's his standard? That's a new standard? We just go with some new standard because it's a new standard? The only way we can have something bigger than us is to have God in our life. And that's why God sat himself where he sat himself. Because his standard will always be the same. It will never change. And I tell you today, when we become discommitted to those things, we disconnect. Yes, we need our education, but I want it to be a whole life education. Amen. One that reaches the entire life, the entire family, the entire schism of thinking. All that we do. Today, when we lay hands on you, that's what we're believing for. Teachers, principals, educators. There are teachers, there are bus drivers, there are cafeteria workers that are in this room. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Put your hands up and begin to give Him thanks, would you? Come on, let's begin to thank Him. Come on, let's give Him thanks. Hallelujah. As we get this started this morning, we're going to start on this section here, and then we're going to move this way. And then we're going to start over here with Brother Richard. There are going to be two lines. You start on this back wall, starting here, and this wall over here with Brother Richard. So please, if you exit this way and go to the back walls, and exit this way and go to this wall. We're going to start from this side first. Ushers, get in your positions. Oh, I got it, Mike. Once we pray for you, you're dismissed. Don't forget there's a summer surge. Uh, sign up out here. If you give uh, your deposit money by September the 30th, you'll have $25 deducted from your bill total. Children's ministry, you have new shirts in the breakout room. They're giving out new shirts to all the children's ministry people. So, summer surge. If you give your summer surge deposit before the 30th of September, we'll take off another $25 off the total bill. Amy and I are going to walk one way and then we're going to walk the other way. We'll lay hands on people two directions and it'll go by very fast, I promise. Let's go down and start this end. We'll start the other end. Just form along the back wall. And after we pray for you, you're dismissed. Hallelujah. We go from glory. Father, in the name of Jesus. You ready? Father, now in the name of Jesus, I speak over them. And I thank you, Lord, right now. We fill them with your goodness in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the power of God in their life. Thank you, Lord, right now. We thank you for the power of God for college. We thank you, Lord, that all the needs are met. Father, we thank you, Lord, that every need is met. And we speak blessing, healing, and encouragement and power in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we speak it so. In the name of Jesus. 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 And so, power. Empowerment. Father, thank you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Full, 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 full. 
able, anointed in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We speak anointing over them. We speak anointing over them. We speak anointing over them, we speak anointing over them in Jesus' name. We call them so in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for anointing, empowerment, safety, and protection. Father, we speak it. We speak it in Jesus' name. We call them anointed. Lord, bless, 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 bless. Bless, bless, bless. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we call it so. We receive it in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, it's so. Father, we lay hands on this. Lord, impart to them the ability, the power. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, all the power and the ability in Jesus' name. Father, right now, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we speak it so. We call it so in Jesus' name. We speak it so in Jesus' name. Father, as we lay hands on them, we call everything we pray for into existence. We thank you for empowerment in Jesus' name, for healing and deliverance. Father, everything needed shall be accomplished right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, benefit, blessing, healing, and health. Father, we speak it so. Thank you, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, it's so. We speak blessing, healing, abundance. Father, that they'll be able to do all the best to do all that they need to accomplish shall be done. Every anointing they need, we call it into them. We speak it in Jesus' name. Power and empowerment of heaven. And empowerment of heaven. Ability beyond their ability. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, right now, in Jesus' name. It's so. We anoint them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for favor. I thank you for favor. I thank you now in Jesus' name. Father, right now, right now in Jesus' name, we call it so, the favor of God, the anointing of the Lord. Father, as we lay hands, they're empowered, able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, right now in Jesus' name, right now in Jesus' name. Right now, 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 in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Right now, we speak it so in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that every one of these kids, Father, we speak the anointing of God on them. They are able to do it, to excel, to grow. Father, in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. It's so. Thank you, Lord. Lord, right now. Lord, I thank you for it. Right now, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray over this. Father, they may not even realize it. But we thank you. Right now, for your empowerment, your ability, your strength. Right now, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We speak over this in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We pray. We believe, Lord, for your empowerment. Lord, for it will happen according to your word. Father, they're able to do. They're able to help. They're able to help. Father, I thank you, Lord, that all the Lord of Ananea, Sabra, Sabra, Nube, Sabra, Rarobo, Shonolobo, Sidiana, for every one of them. Father, we speak it over them in the name of Jesus. We call blessing, empowerment, anointing in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to know those in the name of Jesus, it's so, in Jesus' name, it's so, blessing, 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 in Jesus' name, Father, right now, Lord, I thank you, Lord, higher and higher, more and more, we speak it over them, we speak it over them, Father, Lord, they excel, they have favor, they have blessing, we call blessing, we call anointing, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, healing and deliverance, power. Oh, Sandra Mananubia, Dobris and Delivery of Pananubia Lalabasia, La Brasa Baragabas Salamona, Sempre de la Musha Colobos of Pananubia, in the name of Jesus, higher and higher, higher and higher, more and more. We speak it over them, we call them. Bless, 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 bless. 
I thank you, Lord, every one of them. Father, they're empowered by God, influenced by heaven, capable from God. Lord, they have wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Lord, they move forward in wisdom, understanding. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus.
Lord, you make it work. I speak it over him now that he sees and knows you.